Codependency is a topic that is constantly discussed in relationship psychology and in addiction groups. Codependency is treated like a dysfunction or like a mental disorder, kind of like, or personality disorder, kind of like narcissism. Now, those of you who have heard about codependency know that codependency and narcissism often go hand in hand. But I'm going to tell you today that codependency, just like narcissism, is not actually a psychological dysfunction. What it is, is a style, albeit a dysfunctional style, of having relationships. This is why it would take way too long to explain codependency completely to you in just one video. It's a whole way of being in relationships. Codependency is a style of relationship to oneself, the world, and other people in the world. It's a style that's ingrained early on in childhood and maintained into adulthood. It is the byproduct of adapting to dysfunctional human relationships. But I have bad news for you. Dysfunctional relationships are in fact the most common style of relationship today. They are the rule, not the exception. A dysfunctional relationship, by definition, is a relationship where needs are met in ways that are destructive to one or both people in the relationship. For example, a person may learn to meet their own needs for closeness by denying their own personal truth. Or a person may meet their need to never be abandoned by keeping someone sick so they can't ever leave because they're dependent on the caretaking that they're receiving. Or a person may meet the other person's need to feel good about themselves by keeping themselves small. This list could be five miles long of all the ways that a relationship could be dysfunctional in nature. A codependent relationship and the style of relationship that a person that we call codependent exhibits is dysfunctional in nature because it is destructive to both themselves and the person they are in a relationship with. However, we can only say that dependency in general has anything to do with codependency if the way that the people are dependent on each other in the relationship is detrimental or destructive instead of beneficial. There is a common misconception relative to a codependent relationship or a codependent individual, and that is that it's a dysfunction involving being too dependent upon someone else. This is not actually the case. Personally, I wish that the name for this way of having relationships would change, because the name codependency suggests that dependence in general is the problem when it isn't. Many people define codependency as an excessive reliance on a partner. This isn't the case. Where they are getting this from is that people with codependent styles of relationship and being have a very poor sense of self. Their relationship strategy is to give themselves up in order to be in a relationship, which never works. It just makes for a horribly painful and destructive relationship, and it makes them seem like they're giving themselves completely away to the person they're in a relationship with, which looks like complete reliance. Those of us who inhabit the Western world are indoctrinated with the value of independence. We are raised to believe that being dependent in any way makes you pathetic, powerless, and weak. People in the Eastern world, however, are not raised with this same way of being. They aren't raised with an addiction to independence. To understand this dynamic of dependence versus independence, I suggest you watch some of my videos in order to be well versed on the subject. These videos are Dependence versus Independence, Self Trust versus Independence, How Has It Come to This, The Societal Collapse into Independence, and Using People, Ask Teal Episode About Interdependence. Whether you like it or not, in this time-space reality that you live in, you are completely dependent. You are also, at the same time, incapable of being dependent. <laughs> in this universe, the basic premise, the basic truth, is that all is one. Everything is made of the same energy. It is just expressing itself in different forms. So, this means, for example, you are completely dependent upon the food that you take into your f mouth from your breakfast plate this morning. You couldn't say that you are an independent person unless what you ate on the breakfast table was you this morning. However, if you look at it this way, everything is one, so you are the carrot that's actually sitting on your plate, so you are actually eating yourself. At the same time as you're completely dependent on the food you're eating, you are also the food you're eating, so you're only ever dependent on you. It is so open to interpretation what type of dependence is powerless and what type of dependence is empowering, what type of dependency is healthy and what type of dependency is not healthy. 
For example, one person could be dependent on somebody in a way that's destructive to them, where another person could be dependent on someone in that exact same way, and it wouldn't be destructive at all. It would be beneficial to both people. This is the difference between symbiosis and unhealthy dependency. For example, it might be obvious that it's probably not particularly healthy in a relationship if somebody does absolutely everything for us. So if we're dependent on them to the degree that we're dependent on them to brush our teeth, we're dependent on them to feed us, we're dependent on them to do everything that there is to do for us, right? Unhealthy. We've already judged and labeled it as unhealthy. Uh-oh. What if you're a child? Or, uh-oh, what if you have some kind of disability? Now suddenly, this way of being dependent isn't destructive. Instead, it's exactly what they need. We can therefore be in a very healthy and fully symbiotic relationship with somebody if we have these types of needs and it's not destructive to us in any way to get those needs met, provided that we find somebody who is also enhanced, whose life is improved by meeting those needs, as opposed to destroyed by meeting those needs. Another example is we could say it's not healthy in a marriage for our partner to dedicate their life to our life. It could be dysfunctional if their focus is constantly on our career success and our needs and our well-being. But what if we're a politician or a person in a similar excessively demanding position? When this is the case, that kind of thing is exactly what we need in a partner. A relationship becomes dysfunctional the minute we find ourselves with a partner who is made unhappy by being dedicated to us in this way. But if dedicating oneself to someone in this way enhances a person's sense of happiness and purpose, it is perfectly functional. Lots of dysfunction in relationship owes itself, in fact, to incompatibility. For more information about this, watch my video titled Incompatibility, a Harsh Reality in Relationships. Because we all come from different life circumstances and we all need different things to heal and we all find ourselves in different positions in life, the things that we need and that would enhance our life and benefit us are going to be different from person to person. What may be completely dysfunctional for someone else may be completely healthy for us. I have met couples who have spent years upon years upon years without spending one minute, really, away from each other, meaning they're with each other 24 hours a day, where it is perfectly functional. One could say they're dependent on each other if they have to be with each other 24 hours a day. But for them, because it's a symbiotic relationship, it doesn't destroy them in any way. It doesn't affect their well-being. In fact, it enhances it. They are perfectly in alignment to depend on each other in that way. I've met other couples where, if they were to try to spend every minute together, if they were to dedicate their lives to each other, either person in the relationship would feel diminished by having to do that. They would feel like something was taken away from their well-being. So what is functional and healthy for the one person, in terms of dependency, is completely dysfunctional and unhealthy for the other couple and their idea of what health and wellness is. It is always easy to project our own idea of what is functional, which is usually what we feel like we need for our well-being, without really seeing someone or feeling someone or hearing them or understanding them. But I can guarantee you that if you really take the time to go into someone else's perspective, to really hear them, feel them, see them, understand them, your idea of what a person needs and what is functional or healthy for them will absolutely change. The elements of a dysfunctional relationship can only be called dysfunctional if they are destructive to one or the other person, or both, in a relationship. And this should be the only concern that we have, not dependency in general. It is critical that we accept that codependency is not about how much time you spend with someone or the degree to which you depend on them. What codependency is really about is the desperation for certain needs to be met. Needs like closeness, needs like self-esteem. And a person feeling incapable of getting those needs met directly, and therefore going in indirect ways and manipulative ways to get those needs met, and the ways that that affects not only them, but the people around them. Have a good week.